Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You have to be a patient person to keep vigil all night long the night before Easter Sunday. It is a long trek from the dawn of creation in Genesis 1 all the way to the first day of the week after Jesus' crucifixion in A.D. 30. You've waited quite a while for the grand reveal of the risen Christ. And your reward for your patience comes to us in the Easter Gospel in which we hear, He is not here. Well, okay. Well, in contrast to your patience up to this point, I find that one of Jesus' more endearing qualities is actually his impatience. And uh, St. Mark especially portrays Jesus' impatience. On Easter evening, after Jesus is risen, and the Lord finally does appear to the apostles, he comes to them and he says rather abruptly, he rebukes them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. You see, what we get in the other Gospels is Jesus appears and he says, peace be with you. And he gives them these words of comfort and consolation. Well, that's the other Gospels. That's not Mark. He rebukes them for their hardness of heart and unbelief. And then he says straight away, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to all creation. Now get to it. Now, that seeming impatience of Jesus actually rubs off on his messengers which we see in the angel. And this messenger can identify with this quality of Jesus because the angel, when he speaks to the women at the tomb, he says that Christ is risen just as he told you. And then he says, do not marvel. In other words, don't stand there looking shocked. He told you that this was going to happen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Go and find him in Galilee. Just what he told you to do. Now, what else did you expect him to do? Where else would he be? No? Okay. Well, let me spell it out for you. What he said was, thus it is written, the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Now, now follow me for a minute. All evening long, we have been keeping vigil. We have been following the trail that the angel now sends us on, that the trail that Jesus blazes through all of Holy Scripture. We heard Job confess him. I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last, he will stand upon the earth. Somebody should write a hymn about that. It's Job who actually serves as a type of the righteous man, the one who suffers precisely for his righteousness. But then in the end, he is vindicated by God and he has all of his life and all of his fortunes restored. And you follow the trail a little more and we get to Jonah. And Jonah was the one who we heard him preach repentance to the people of Nineveh. But it's the same Jonah that we thought was as good as dead. And he spent three days in the belly of the fish, but the fish disgorged him three days later. In the same day, in the same way that on the third day, our Lord Jesus burst through the belly of death, that he broke the mouth of the grave, that he came and he demolished the gates of hell, and he walked right out on the third day. He is the fourth man, by the way. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into the fiery furnace, Nebuchadnezzar looks in and he goes, I think I see somebody who looks like the Son of God. He was there. And he was there shielding Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace in the same way that he promises to us that he will shield us from the flames of hell. And now we see that Christ is the true Isaac. He is the beloved son of the father who he received back from the dead. It's not so strange that the son of man is risen, that he is resurrected by the same spirit who breathes the life into the dry bones in the valley of Ezekiel's vision. The story of Jesus could not have gone any other way. The end of the story, his resurrection, your salvation, was a foregone conclusion 
from the foundation of the earth. You just follow the trail of Holy Scripture. You follow the trail of Jesus' words, and you'll see him. So, chop, chop, the angel says, get to it. You keep following the trail. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. You know, today we're in the same situation, actually, as the two Marys and Salome. Because everybody knows, even the most hard-bitten atheist, I think even Richard Dawkins knows, that Jesus the Nazarene was crucified. This is a simple historical fact. And the situation is also the same today in the sense that today the tomb is still empty and you can go and see it. It's housed in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Nobody has ever turned up. And today we actually ask the same question that the two Marys and Salome and the other women asked when they were on their way to anoint Jesus' body. They said, who will roll away for us the stone from the mouth of the tomb? The difference is, when we ask that question, we're not asking it about Jesus' tomb. We're asking it about our tomb. Who will roll away the stone for us? Who will open our grave for us? Who has the cure to death? Is it possible? There's only one way to make sense of all the data and to answer humanity's question. He is not here. He is risen just as I love it. Just as he told you, his word is the only trail that can lead you to the place where you see him. It's the only trail that you can follow so that you can learn the truth about the empty tomb. We keep following the trail as we've done tonight, as we've done all of our lives. We follow God's meandering path through the scriptures. There is nothing else that will open somebody's eyes. He is not here. He's not in the tomb. He is not among the dead of history. But when he opens to you the scriptures, when he shows you the path down which he was going the whole time, then you know where you have to go to see him. You can't stay at the tomb because tombs are for dead people. So the next logical place to go is, oh yeah, it's Galilee, just like he said. We go to Galilee. And as Jesus had told us, and as we said, it could not have gone any differently. So the angel says, slightly impatiently, like the Lord who sent him, don't marvel. Now, naturally, you know what the women do. They marvel. And they're terrified, and they tear out of the tomb trembling, and I think with just a touch of ecstasy, because now they know the truth. And they go to tell the news to the other disciples and Peter what they have seen, so that they will all follow the trail to Galilee, to where Jesus awaits. So go and see his risen body. And if, as you're going, a little bit of fear a little bit of ecstasy seizes you. That's okay. Just make sure on your way you tell the other disciples, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.